Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to my daily chat, 5 p.m. Pacific time on my Facebook Live, and I'll tell you about that at the back end. Uh, episode today is number 661. And a topic today that came up this morning, and I'll talk more about that in a moment, is I have a dream of women running the world. And if you've been watching my broadcast for a while, you know that's in me, but I wanted to talk more directly about that now. So before I jump into the topic, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about, and then we'll get busy. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which is what inspires these talks and also why I do what I do, and especially why I talk about the topic today. Um, and I started these talks over two years ago, and now I'm at to number 661 of Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So there's a theme here. And I was avoiding this topic in a way because I had several conversations this morning with women that I just met and women are just, and I know this morning and the response was pretty incredible. So I wanted to share more about that, which is I have a vision or I have a dream of women running the world because it's, well, the way I said it this morning, just to be clear was, um, you know, what are you up to? What are you doing? I said, I think I've got to change the world so women can run it as well as saying it. And it was resonating very truthfully inside of me based on the response I got, but also it's what I've been about for a while. And I, pro I didn't edit the title. Hmm. Let me expand slightly. <laughs> what I'm really talking about is I have a dream of the feminine running the world because there have been examples of women in leadership before that by, were by no means feminine. Um, I'm thinking back to my own, to the old country, to my own upbringing with currently Theresa May and before that um, Margaret Thatcher, who are both examples of non-feminine female leadership, just to be clear. So when I'm talking about what the vision I have of women running the world, it's the feminine energetic that women bring when they're in their feminine that will change things. And the reason I'm saying this very bluntly is that we men have screwed things up. And I don't mean the masculine, I mean the macho the old-fashioned male way of running the world, the patriarchy that we live under, um, is not a masculine teaching. It's not toxic masculinity, it's not normal masculinity, it's machoism. And machoism is, machoism is every man for himself. <laughs> nice one, Della. <laughs> Don't you already run the world. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Maybe not blatantly, maybe subtly. I'm gonna talk more blatantly about it, so thank you for that little chuckle because in a way yes I understand that because the thing about it you know behind every great man is a powerful woman what's well, about time is about every time in front of behind every amazing woman is a powerful man switching around so maybe that should be part of the manifesto too um coming back into what I was thinking before so what has been what, what, it's like the driver in the car of the world up to now has been the macho patriarchal society and based on results, a lot of good things got done. No argument. Lots of good things happened to change the world in positive ways. At the same time, the price we've been paying may be too high. Well, not, not too high. It has been at a cost. So what we've been, doing, we've been doing as a culture, as a race, as a society, to the planet, to the environment, to each other, to other countries, to the way we do things, hasn't been the most um, constructive. The thing about the feminine that I really want to bring into this conversation when I'm talking about this um, blatantly is that the feminine energetic is an inclusive energy. The feminine energetic is mother nature. The feminine energetic is the life force of this planet. The, the, the female energetic, sorry, the feminine energetic is what heals us. And I firmly believe that the course we're setting for the future must be led by feminine energy, feminine energetic, feminine mindset, feminine belief, feminine ways, if we are to survive as a race. So this is a rather big topic to bring out right now, but it's Sunday, why not? Let's be, a, let's be more spiritual and esoteric about it. But I wanna make this functional. And I'm saying this from the point of view of having no clue how I'm gonna do it, so I'm just gonna say this right now. But what I'm very aware of is that the need for the feminine in leadership, the need for the feminine to guide, the need for the feminine to bring us together, the need for the feminine to change us for the better, 
is more important now than ever. And so putting women in charge, where women run the world, not behind the scenes, Della, <laughs> is absolutely fundamentally what I'm talking about. Now, that doesn't mean that we men can't be involved. As I mentioned before, it was the macho patriarchal society that got us where we are now, which is good in some ways and horrendous in other ways. It's the masculine in men that is now required. It is the masculine in men that is now invited because when the masculine in men is awoken, as even as I had, then men and women can stand together in collaboration, in partnership, and we can work together, which is what we haven't done so far. So say Dell, I'm just gonna read what you said there. So men run the world and we run them. Ha <laughs> ha. Right. So equals men, women's running the world. Yeah. That was my that was my point, Della. I mean it's the thing. I understand what you're saying. But I'm talking about let's let's reverse it in a way. Let's have the women out front. And and let me be clear about something else, by the way. I talked about this I talked about this many times before how women have been entrained by our culture to act like men because the business world was created by men for men. And women have been trying to fit in ever since. That's one of, my, one of my sort of catchphrases. But the reality is very true that the way that women have been in the business world and the way been, women have been in the political world and the way that women have been in the world in general in success format has been, unfortunately, out of alignment with their true nature. Most women who have been in the business world have had to conform to it to fit. Understandably, you know, you have to adapt to the environment you're in. And so women trying to compete with men has to do the same thing. Even sensitive men trying to compete has to do the same thing. Now, there are some examples of those who became more entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial based, including men in fashion, women in life, living in a more feminine heart. So I'm not saying that there's only one way to do things. But the business structure we have now, the business world, the commercial world as it is, is really not dedicated towards honoring both masculine and feminine. Again, it's macho driven because it's ego, my way, the highway, I'm getting it done, competition, kill or be killed, that's the mindset. That's not feminine, that's also not masculine. The masculine is competitive, but not at the cost of others. And that's the thing, women in the feminine, men in the masculine, as a general rule, let me, let me sorry, I, have to parap- I keep up to up-level the conversation for a second there. Not all men and not all women align to the masculine or the feminine. It's a general label I'm giving here, because a lot of, quite a few men, tend towards the feminine, more naturally. And I don't mean gay or straight, I'm talking about just energetics. And there are quite a lot of women who tend towards the masculine naturally and not the feminine. But I'm speaking for the more general population because the percentage, percentages, which I don't have clear, just to be clear, just to be clear, clear yeah, um, are for men can be more masculine, generally speaking, and women can be more feminine. I started this journey, this particular part of my journey, about 12 years ago. Yes, it was actually about almost 12 years ago. It was March 27, 2007. So yes, 12 years ago. And I became very, well, first I became transformed by it, but also became very aware of the power and the majesty of the interaction between masculine and feminine energies. And when I discovered how being in the masculine was the most authentic, aligned, and powerful place I could be, my only response to women in the feminine was to serve and to worship and to admire and appreciate and to lead, but from a very different place than I'd ever done before. And when I saw women in the feminine, I was so as I said, struck by the magnificence of the energy, the beauty of the power that women brought through the feminine, that I knew from that point forward I'd be in service to it, which I still am. That's why it's been that way in my coaching with women in the relationship, women being empowered and everything else I do. It's always around that moment, that focus, that understanding. So for 12 years now, it's been very much in my DNA. So this message I'm doing today, which is really a dip into the same conversation I've done quite a few times, is a reminder to, to, to me to say this to you <laughs> so I don't hide it and because I had conversations this morning again with probably five or six different women who were asking me what I do and I told them and they all like beamed and said thank you at, or it's about time or yes we are that sort of response so it was definitely affirmative to say this so I'm saying it here for all to see and respond to that it's time you know we are in a change time of flux and watching what's been happening in this country and watching what's been happening back in England, especially the last couple of days with uh, Theresa May, who's not in a feminine, let's be clear about that, is a disturbing but also saddening, saddening experience because 
what's been happening is the end of a very, well, somebody said it once, and I think it's a great way of saying it, is the death rattle of the, of the patriarchal society. But the thing is, the only way to end the patriarchal society is to bring forward a more balanced, inclusive, and more matriarchal inclusive society. And that's, I'm going to be careful with the wording because I don't necessarily know that matriarchy is the right way to put it either. Because feminine leadership isn't about women running everything as a matriarchy because that isn't necessarily much, but that much better than the patriarchal society. But it's a feminine energetic that we bring to the fore for decision making, for leadership, and for running the world effectively. Because as I said before, the feminine is inclusive. The feminine is additive and the feminine is collaborative. And that's the energetic we need to bring forward, men and women, to really thrive in this world. Our future, uh, our future depends upon how much we can cooperate and collaborate with each other. We've been running the competitive spirit and the, and the kill or be killed and the damn, the damn and damnation type mindset for many years. And it's been fun to watch in movies, but in real life it's been killing us. And this exclusionary attitude we have in this country right now and the disparity between the different um, minorities, so to speak, because the Aryan type thing is a, minor, is a minority too, is only creating more friction and less cooperation. And the truth of our future is, if we kill each other off, nobody wins. So the feminine energy running the planet, having women run the world, so to speak, is absolutely the only way that we can survive. If that didn't scare you enough, I don't know what will, but that's the truth of what's happening. Hi Deb, what do you say there? The feminine brings forth the value of community, family, collaborative transformation, exactly. And everybody's involved, so thank you for that. So that just seemed to be my manifesto, <laughs> another layer of it, I've done it a couple of times now. I've, and today it came out very, so today it came out publicly. <laughs> So I want to say it here just to have it out in context and start a conversation. This is not a lecture. It's just a quick little taste of what's coming in my messaging because I said that my message has been shifting recently because my Facebook Lives are done, all 660 of them. have been moving me. It's like moving the needle across to a different position. And where I come from now is very clear for me. And they ain't going, it, there ain't no going back. And I'm going to speak, keep speaking about this. So I hope this has been of value to you. Um, it may have provoked you, it may have upset you, it may have excited you. I'd like to know what you thought below in the comments. Um, this is a quick broadcast just to get some um, traction of this message out in the world in a way that I haven't tried before, I haven't done before. So I hope it's been helpful to you. Uh, how were the two energies, male and female, intended to act? Hi, Carrie. Um, how, the, how were the two energies, male and female, intended to interact? Well, I'm speaking about the masculine and feminine versus male and female because male and female are gender-based. Masculine and feminine are polarity-based the way I use the languaging. And masculine and feminine are the yin and yang of life. So they interact naturally because they fit together. And the thing is, like the yin and yang symbol, as one of my friends has put it beautifully, is because the yin, yin and yang symbol include a part of each other, it's very interactive and, very, and it becomes two parts of the whole. Having said that, none of us are part of a whole. We are a whole ourselves. So I'm going to reaffirm that. But the masculine energy is the directional energy. The masculine energy is one that can see, has a far, has like a far-sighted vision, is a laser-focused, is directional. The feminine energy is one that gathers up and collects and brings everybody together. So those energies work together because the masculine can't do it on its own, ultimately. In fact, the masculine is a more of a solo energy in a lot of ways because we are so linear in our mind way, ways of doing things. The feminine brings us in together. So for me, the feminine energy is the energy that we, that we all need for our future for our survival, for the thriving. So ladies, when you bring your feminine energy forward, for your men or for men in general, it will help us all be more effective, be more successful and be more aligned to our true values. And when women remind us men to be in a masculine, not nagging, <laughs> but when you're a feminine, it's almost like you can face us and say, where are you? Because that's one thing that worked for me in one of the trainings I was in was when women were in the feminine and were face, up, face to face with me, and basically were saying like, where are you? It put me in my feminine masculine so quickly because I realized I had no choice but to be there. So I believe the energies in some ways are almost required to be together, masculine and feminine side by side, because they interact in a way that is holistic and that we as individuals can bring both energies forward. Because the other part is masculine and feminine is inside of all of us. So we can bring feminine energy forward just as easy as, easy as masculine, whichever physical body we're in, male or female or other gender. 
um, or non-gender specific. There's, um, that's not an area of playing that much, so I, my language is a bit, cl bit clunky there, but there's some different male and female um, preferences, and excuse me, male and female genders and masculine and feminine preferences. So I hope that gave you some answer to your question, Gary. Um, it's a continual dance. And I'm still learning. I've been doing this for 12 years and I'm still learning. And my teachers have been doing it for a lot longer than I have. And they're still learning. Because this is a, an, this is a journey of unfolding. Oh, you're welcome, Carrie. Thank you for that. Um, this is the beginning of my conversation about this. After 660 broadcasts, I'm trying to talk about this more clearly. So this is the beginning for me as well. So again, I appreciate you watching. and hope this has been of help. And if there's been an inspiration, it's been provocative, been inspiring, been challenging, been inviting please put your comments below. I'd really welcome those in. And again, this is my Facebook Live I do every day, so I'll give you some quick notes. Um, every, day, every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually, I do a Facebook Live right here on my personal page, and then I do and I put the replays on my business page and also on YouTube, and I'll give you the links for those so you can find them. Um, Facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby is my personal page where I do these live. Again, 5 p.m. Pacific time, so you can join me here if you want to watch me live and interact. Replays go onto my business page, amongst other places on Facebook which is barryselby.author, we can watch the replay there. Thirdly, <laughs> on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, please subscribe, there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine where these all reside and they get, and every day I do these, they go over there as well. So you can watch them on YouTube, you can watch them on my business page where you'll find them more easily catalogued. So I do invite your questions and your comments and your thoughts. Um, if there is a question you have, please put that below as well. And if you have some thoughts or reactions or responses to what I said, I invite, your invite them below in the comments. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for letting me get that off my chest because it was definitely been getting stronger inside of me. And uh, I'll be back, back again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I have no idea what the topic is going to be, but I'm sure it'll be interesting. So come and join me then and see what happens. I'll see you soon. Bye.